Renowned Jewish-American author Phil Broth published his first collection of short stories, Goodbye, Columbus, 1959, in the famed literary magazine The Paris Review, which had previously published work by Ernest Hemingway, William Faulkner, and William Styron. Roth's stories detail the lives of assimilated American Jews as they move away from their parents' traditions and struggles to attend college, live in the suburbs, and adopt the WASP, slang for white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, lifestyle. The collection won the National Book Award for Fiction in 1960, and catapulted Roth to literary stardom. Five decades after his debut, Roth remains one of America's most celebrated living writers, having written 27 books. Goodbye. Columbus consists of six short stories. Its themes encompass paradoxical love, self-hatred, and the ambivalence of cultural assimilation. The stories are marked by their caustic humor, honest, and controversial, depiction of American Jews, and insight into human character. The first short story, Goodbye, Columbus, is more of a novella. Narrated by a young Jewish man named Neil Klugman, it depicts Klugman's acceptance of the limits of assimilation. Klugman lives with his Aunt Gladys and Uncle Max in Newark, New Jersey, the city of Roth's birth. Klugman has recently graduated from Rutgers University, the flagship state university of New Jersey. He's a minimum wage employee of the Newark Public Library. One summer, he falls in love with a third-generation Jewish woman, Brenda Potemkin, who is an undergraduate of Radcliffe College, the female section of Harvard. As well as being beautiful, Brenda is highly competitive, never gets into trouble, and doesn't take Jewish tradition all that seriously. She lives in Short Hills, an affluent suburban neighborhood in New Jersey. The novella opens as Brenda asks Neil to hold her glasses while she takes a beautiful dive into a pool. Neil struggles to pinpoint just what his relationship to Brenda should be, her family is wealthy and well-assimilated, while his is conspicuously Jewish and working class. He doesn't want these class differences to matter, and yet they do. Neil has an ambiguous relationship with Brenda's parents. Though Mr. Potemkin came from similar origins as Neil, he doubts that Neil can provide the best life for his daughter. Mrs. Potemkin, who is also beautiful and a former tennis star, isn't convinced that Neil will encourage Brenda to follow Jewish traditions, Mrs. Potemkin is a faithful follower of Judaism. Brenda is very close in age and temperament to her brother, Ron Potemkin. Ron played basketball for Ohio State University, in Columbus, Ohio. He had the time of his life and frequently plays his Columbus record, which includes a recording of his graduation ceremony and a song with the lyrics, Goodbye, Columbus, on repeat. The song and Ron's attachment enter Neil's dreams. In one dream, he and a black boy from the library sail to Tahiti. Neil thinks about Paul Gauguin, the 19th-century French painter who has been charged with exploiting native Tahitian art by incorporating much traditional designs into his paintings. Paul Gauguin is, in Neil's imagination, similar to Christopher Columbus. They both explored new territory and wreaked havoc on the native population. He compares the journeys of Gauguin and Columbus to his own exploration of the rich suburbs of New Jersey. He wonders if assimilation in the style of the Potemkins only furthers the exploitation of certain people, like the young black boy he meets in the public library. Aunt Gladys suggests that Neil is becoming too fancy schmancy by hanging out with the Potemkins so often and visiting their country club. Neil and Brenda disagree over whether she should go on birth control in the form of a diaphragm. She doesn't want to, as it's illegal for unmarried women to have one, and she knows her parents would disapprove. Neil believes that if Brenda really loved him, she would use the diaphragm. One day, Mrs. Potemkin finds the diaphragm, a discovery which precipitates their breakup. The conversion of the Jews is the second story in the collection. It follows an inquisitive 13-year-old, Ozzy Friedman, asking his rabbi uncomfortable and unconventional questions, such as, could the Virgin Mary really have a child without having some form of intercourse? His mother and the rabbi end up slapping him for what they view as insubordination. Even though Ozzy just wants to get closer to God, Ozzy responds by climbing onto the roof of the synagogue and threatening to kill himself unless everyone does what he says. Dozens of assembled Jews, including the rabbi and Ozzy's mother, agree. Ozzy commands them to fall on their knees, in the Christian tradition for redemption, and say they believe that Christ is their savior. After they do so, Ozzy jumps safely into a net held by firefighters. 
Defender of the Faith follows a Jewish-American military sergeant who refuses to pull the Jew card to receive perks from the military. It first appeared in The New Yorker. Epstein is about a man nearing 60 years old starting an affair with another married woman. You can't tell a man by the songs he sings, describes a man's experience being bullied. The final story, Eli, the fanatic, humorously looks at a group of well-assimilated American Jews who share their fears that their good relations with the WASP community will weaken once more Orthodox Jews move into their neighborhood. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.